The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. Hey everyone, Paul Akers. You know, I have a smile on my face and the smile comes from the fact that I had a beautiful relationship with Norman Bodak. And as you know, Norman passed away just a few days ago. And I still feel like Norman's here with me, to be honest with you. His spirit was so alive. Norman and I met about five or six years ago, and the way we met was just absolutely amazing. I'd heard a lot about Norman. I traveled around speaking, and people always said, have you met Norman Bodak? I said, no, I don't know, I don't know Norman. And a mutual friend of ours connected us together because there was a Japan study mission going on, and Norman was leading it. And so I told my friend, hey, you know what? I would love to go to Japan with Norman Bodak. What a, what a great experience. Uh, the father of lean in the United States, the one that brought Ono's work here, the one that brought Taichi Ono's work here, the one that brought uh, Sageo Shingo's work here, the one that introduced me to Richio Shingo. I mean, the man has a far reaching influence with a lot of impactful people in the lean world. Why wouldn't I want to go to Japan with him? So. I sent a message to my friend and said, hey, I want to go with Norman. And literally, it was five minutes later, Norman called me on the phone, right here in this office. I was right here, sitting right here. He said, hey, Paul, I understand you want to go to Japan. He goes, is this Norman Bodak? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And very humble, very, very unassuming. And I said, I would love to go. And so I said, are there any open spaces? And Norman said, yeah, we have some open spaces. Well, I immediately typed an email to all my network of people all over the world, and the entire trip was filled almost overnight. So we went from about eight people signed up to about 32 signed up. It was really amazing. And that Japan study mission was over the top. The reason I tell that story is because I had been to Japan many times prior to that. I'd been on Japan study missions, if you will, but none impacted me the way that Norman did. And the reason why is because Norman loved Japan. And Norman imparted to me a love of Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese thinking, the Japanese people. I'll tell you a story that happened on that first bus ride. And Norman sometimes could be a little colorful, if you will, or maybe a little embellished on how great things are. Look who's talking. I mean, that's what I do too. But he would say, oh, Japan has the best fruit in the world. There's no one's fruit. And I'm going, Norman, come on, you're full of it. The fruit in Japan is just like the fruit everywhere else. And I started tasting the apples, the strawberries, and everything there. And I started going, God, he's right. The Japanese are so particular about everything. And that's when really the curtain got pulled back for me because of Norman, that the Japanese did things in an extraordinary way. They loved precision. But the number one thing that Norman taught me and changed my life on was the fact that when he asked this question on the first Japan study mission, what is Japan all about? And we had a room of 32 people and everyone raised their hand, this and this and this, including me. And not one person got it right. And Norman said these words, quality. Norman had a quality life. He loved quality. He appreciated the quality that the Japanese culture brought to the world. Norman wanted to bring quality, Japanese thinking to the rest of the world. Because this is really the essence of what the Toyota production system is about. It's about producing a quality car so the customer trusts you and you have a long-term relationship. And I had a beautiful relationship with Norman. You know, we would fight a little bit. We had a lot of fun with that. But I traveled all over the world with Norman. I went to Grenada with him. I went to India with him. I went to Japan with him. We became very, very close. I considered him my father. My father died about 15 years ago. And when my father died, he became that mentor figure to me, a man of great wisdom and great experience. So I learned from Norman, first of all, to love the Japanese culture. I learned from Norman the powerful concept of quality, that if you focus on quality, the majority of all your problems will melt away. I also learned from Norman the idea of connecting people 
Norman knew everybody and he wasn't afraid to call anybody. He tells so many stories that are just incredible about him calling up the CEOs or trying to get a hold of the President of the United States and just persisting until he got what he wanted. And you know, he did that because he had a very winsome spirit. And Norman was just a nice guy. He was just an amazing guy. But you know, I'm talking about Norman past tense. I can't even talk about Norman past tense because Norman is with me right now. Norman encompassed my life and embraced my life so much. I feel like Norman's here. I feel like I could hear him. I could touch him. Norman is just unbelievable. He changed my life. Did I agree with everything Norman said? No, it didn't matter. He opened my mind and I am so deeply indebted to him for everything he did, exposing me to TVS Motors in India, having establishing a friendship with Venu Shrevanatsan, uh, the chairman of the board of TVS Motors, uh, exposing me to Richie Oshingo, exposing me to Mr. Amazawa, former vice president of Lexus, president of Georgetown, Kentucky. Norman connected me. He connected me and he gave me the boldness to reach out and be more connected. Oftentimes people will talk about me as someone who connects people together. Thank you, Norman. Thank you for helping me fall in love with Japan. Thank you for teaching me about quality. Thank you for being the stimulus to starting the Japan study mission that I now lead, you know, 30, 40 teams from around the world to Japan to teach them the marvelous wonders of Japanese thinking and culture. Thank you, Norman. Thank you, Norman, for causing me to reach out at a level that I never thought possible to connect myself with other people. Norman, you're unbelievable. You know, one of my favorite and most precious things that happened between Norman and I is when he wrote his book, A Miraculous Life. I said, Norman, you gotta get it on audio. And he goes, well, I don't know. Norman, come up here and work with Greg, my audio guy, stay at my home and record your book. And he goes, well, okay. And he would listen to me and I loved it. And he came up here and he stayed with me in my home and he recorded his book. And his book is on audio, you can go on YouTube. A Miraculous Life, Norman Bodak. I've got it up there, I uploaded it to YouTube. Go Paul Akers, Norman Bodak, A Miraculous Life. I've made over 20 videos of Norman and me traveling around the world. If you wanna see Norman, you never wanna forget him, go watch the videos. I'm actually gonna take his book, A Miraculous Life, and put it on my new app, Two Second Lean Play, which will allow you to listen to not only Henry Ford's book and my five books in nine languages, but now Norman's book. And you can hear Norman's voice and you can hear him tell the stories of his miraculous life. Norman, thank you. Thank you for respecting me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for your, your full heart to embrace life, to embrace other people and teach people the wonder of learning. Thank you, Norman. Brought to you by PaulAkers.net, where you'll find all Paul's books and lean resources for free, including the new two-second Lean Play app, like Audible, but free. To listen to Lean is Lean on the two-second Lean Play app at PaulAkers.net.